In this case, you've been given a parametrically defined curve, x and y, and you've been asked for d squared y dx squared, or the second derivative, in terms of t, and then what does it tell you about the graph at t equals 0? So we need to start with dy dx, which is dy dt over dx dt. And so dy dt will be 4e to the 4t using the chain rule, multiplying by the derivative of the inner function. And dx dt will just be e to the t. So this can be simplified using log rules. If we had 4 times x cubed over x, of course we would say that's the same as 4 x to the 3 minus 1. Probably wouldn't even say that. You'd just skip right to 4 x squared. But this subtraction of exponents is key. We're going to be able to do that in this problem as well. We're going to have 4 times e to the 4 t minus t, which is the same as 4e to the 3t. And that simplifying makes it much easier to take our second derivative, which will be the derivative with respect to t of our dy dx all over the derivative of x with respect to t, which we already have. So the derivative with respect to t of 4e to the 3t all over, well, when we found this, we know that, e to the t. Well, the chain rule here would multiply the derivative of the inner function, which is 3, times the original 4, e to the 3t, over e to the t. 3 times 4 is 12. Same thing, 3t minus t will give us 2t. So this is our second derivative of y with respect to x. And now we're going to plug in 0 for t. So we have 12, and I've missed an e here, excuse me, times e to the 2 times 0. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, e to the 0 is 1, 1 times 12 is 12. That means that <clears throat> at time equals 0, my graph is concave up because my second derivative of y with respect to x is greater than 0. That's a key concept that you'll be asked all over BC Calculus.